Is heaven? No. It's Iowa. Fellows, on Saturday, I saw a discarded quarterback become more powerful than the Golden Gophers. Athens should know when they're conquered. BJ, would you? Would I? Strength and honor. Kelly McManus is Greek, not Roman, right? Huh. Shut up, Spaniard. <laughs> <laughs> this podcast we record will echo an eternity. We're talking gladiator in the pot of dreams. I have my signal. Unleash hell. I'm required to kill, so I kill. Tell me your name. My name is Maximus Decimus Meridius. Commander of the armies of the north. Loyal servant to the true emperor, Marcus Aurelius. Father to a murdered son. Husband to a murdered wife. And I will have my vengeance. In this life or the next. In the crowd. And you'll win your freedom. Are you not entertained? Today I saw a slave become more powerful than the Emperor of Rome. I will give them something they've never seen before. Am I unmerciful? What we do in life echoes in eternity. Thank you for listening. Uh, today we're talking Gladiator, Pot of Dreams. If you listen, we will pod. So, best picture winner, best actor. Second best or second highest grossing movie of the year in 2000. In the year was, 2000, yes. In the future, year 2000. Yes, year of our Lord. Year of our Lord. 2000, second highest grossing Kev- movie. Kevin, how come those drafts you sold me won't mate? <laughs> They're queer, Eric. <laughs> they, they just stand around eating, not mating. At least you're not grabbing my testicles when you tell me that. What, oh, what wow. a move. Guy just comes in here trying to sell you. Isn't that guy, that 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 is that the same guy from like... The mummy that I've seen that yes. guy in him, but yes. he, he's like selling yeah. the Brandon. He's like the same character, right? He's like selling a slave in the mummy, right? He's a character actor, yeah. Okay, yes, yeah, so I think he plays just a yes, a skizzy slave trader guy in the desert, in the, in the <laughs> Middle East. Yeah. Yes. Sorry, continue. Forget the giraffes. I, I've questioned for Eric here. I mean, world's biggest Mission Impossible two fan. Possibly the world's biggest gladiator fan. What you, you get approached in a good son scenario, you can only save one movie. What movie do you save? They're both gladiators. It's a, a great, it's a, it's a legit great movie. Okay. Mission Impossible 2 is fun and I love it. This is like a great movie. But it's not, yeah, okay. Okay. No question. You're, it's your, it's your uh, Elijah Wood. Got it. Okay. That's the movie you're saving. Okay. You mentioned last week. This is—I mean, you—you you watch this literally every year. No, not every year, but every other, every few years. I'll pop. I, I, I want to oh, see. I, a... I so I texted both of you guys. You know, last week was a bummer of a week with the election. Just the thought of watching this movie really just made me perk up. Really, honestly, that's the power of like a great movie. Is like I can just I can go to ancient Rome. I can watch Russell Crowe fuck dudes up. And just be, I can be transported to a, a different time and not worry about the world I live in right now. So really did the, did the key, did the job for me. I, I want to see the, what I want, can you at some point write up a list of like Eric's regulars, the movies you watch every year, every other year. I just want to see the list. What's the list. Cause you seem to have a, just a, a rotation of movies that you just, you hit up. Well, it's a year. lot of Nolans and Tarantinos, but Hey man, Rid- Ridley Scott. Look at is the this the bangers. only Ridley Scott? Um, on that list? Alien Alien-y? is definitely on the list. 
of okay. every couple every couple of years i'll watch that uh blade runner's more of a that's a i mean i've seen it probably four or five oh. times but and maybe you hated it maybe only th- maybe three times i don't know it, i i like that movie it's a great movie but it's that's not like a pop it in and just watch it kind of movie no it's not an easygoing smooth yeah. highly entertaining watch it's yeah. slow and deliberate i'm surprised you even like it i figured you would think it was just like boring and annoying um Okay, but yeah, I, really, Scott is a uh, man. He I don't think he gets enough credit as a like all time great filmmaker because he's got some bad movies in his. So you can his, have bad movies and great movies. The Martian. Great the Martian is a movie I'll watch every. That's such a fun movie. So good. Okay, so you can you can have some great movies and some bad movies and still be a great director. I just want to get you on record as having said that. Yeah, I think he's he's in a different class than like like a Tarantino or a Nolan, where just everything they make is great. Sure, I'm not saying he's the best of all time. I'm not trying to say. That. I'm just uh, we've talked before about directors that have like some movies that are very good and then some that are bad, and then you're like, maybe this guy isn't a very good director. You go on the other way with it. Um, I think it's interesting, but Kevin, you picked this movie. What inspired you to go back to ancient Rome and watch an Australian playing a Spaniard <laughs> Roman kill a bunch of dudes? Wow, that reminds me of Highlander and the Spaniard being played by a Scottish man in that movie. Um, Are you supposed well, to be Australian in that? Oh my God, yeah, okay. That's right. Sorry, that's an aside. I yeah, yeah that. no, that's that's an all time Highlander. Well, or Hunt for October, where he's a Scottish guy playing a Russian, right? That's right. Sorry, yeah, what, a com- great... what a chameleon that guy is! <laughs> yeah, <laughs> really Sean Connery really can roles. play any race, you know, accent, he can really do them all. Yeah, as long as they're a horny Scotsman, <laughs> right? He's really the. John Travolta of his time, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, Gladiator 2 is coming out in November. We're recording this in November um, 2024. So, uh, I thought it was time for a revisit. And I, I personally love Ridley Scott. Uh, growing up... Uh, Blade Runner was a big movie for me, and so was Alien. Agreed. And, and so, I, I, I even like his not so good movies. I think um, Kingdom of Heaven is that one of his? The Orlando yep. Bloom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I enjoyed that I movie too. It. And that's okay. like I, I, I know I've seen parts of it. I don't think it's the one I've seen like all the way through. It's it's an epic, right? It's he's yeah. Ridley Scott's really good at these kind of like epic movies. Yes, and visually good looking movies too. I think is kind of his his uh, highlights, but but he also gets really good performances. He got a really good one on Russell Crowe, won Best Actor. Um, I think he got some of Harrison Ford's best performances. So I think he's a wonderful director. Yeah, um, the, have, the weird thing about Ridley Scott, like his brother, Tony Scott, right? I often get their movies confused. Like who did which one? Like, you know, is Days of Thunder, is that Tony Scott or Ridley Tony Scott? Scott. Right, yeah, I, I, that's but I'm just See, saying, that, like, that, I have that's... to think about it. I'm like, oh, is that I don't like that. Feels like okay. a Tony Scott movie, Top Gun, like Tony Scott. It's just supercharged. Enemy of the State. Who? Which one made that? Isn't that Tony Scott? Okay, I think you're right, but the his are, Tony Scotts are just more overtly broy and actiony, and a little more schlocky. They're fun, but he doesn't have the visual sensibilities. Um, or the nuance and subtlety. Like, I don't think Tony would ever do like Blade Runner. Uh, that's, that's just not the kind of movie I would ever expect Tony Scott to have been able to make. It's a little too 
meditative and deliberate and slow. But anyway, sorry, I don't know. Go ahead. I it, I, don't know, I just I feel like their styles are somewhat different. But. Yeah, I just I think visually they look they have a, a similar look and feel to oh. their to their movies. No, disagree. I, I already said I disagree. I, I don't know, like the. You're talking more know. about like the story and the tone. I just well, think it's the like story. The way they it's look. also the camera work. There's like a, like well, you're telling me G.I. Jane doesn't look like a movie Tony Scott could have made. I, I didn't know either one directed G.I. Jane. So yeah, that's a Ridley I, I, Scott movie. Okay. So you didn't didn't know that. Um, I, maybe, I see what I'm, you're saying. Like the cinematography is pretty similar. There's well, like let, a let, gloss to it, you know, yeah. like. Let me give you something, uh, the kind of shot that I just don't think Tony Scott would. So talking about Gladiator, the, the scene where, oh gosh, I don't know. I can mix up the names. Joaquin Phoenix's sister. What, what's the character's name? Can you, you've seen this movie 523 times, Eric. What's her name? Um, what is her name? Uh, uh, boy, I don't know. There's Proximo, and that's the other guy. That's the Proximo's the, <laughs> the, 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 Proximo's the leader of the yeah, like yeah. the uh, gladiators. Maximus is, but I, I don't remember. Yeah, what her Commodus name. is her brother, Marco, Marcus Aurelius. Is it like Lute? Start with an L. I don't know. It doesn't matter, but it, there's a shot where she and Joaquin Phoenix are talking. Lucilla, and it's like, Lucilla is her name, okay. I think. Yeah, there's a scene where yeah. she is talking to Joaquin Phoenix in, in the palace or wherever it is, and the lighting is immaculate. It's this lovely classic lighting where like the light cuts through the darkness, the shadow, like and hits her eyes, and it highlights like the fear and anxiety she's bringing. She's like going to betray her brother and it's it's incredible it's a it's a subtle kind of shot that i don't think you would get in a tony scott movie um and also even kind of some of these performances that you just wouldn't get in a tony scott movie i mean walking i think through, it's the action the action sequences are very similar that may be that may be uh i guess i haven't analyzed the action sequences it, they're kind of like the michael bay tony scott ridley scott action like the way they film action sequences, I think are very similar. See, I guess I view that Tony Scott is skewing more Michael Bay um, on the whole. He is. You're right. You're like right. He's just a, but got a little bit a, more of that DNA in him. Continuum of those three sure. guys, I think. Sure. Yeah. No, Tony I Scott, see. I think, has more angular cuts and quick. Yeah, the, the hyper fast editing. Some of the fights, because they're the. Uh, this movie is terrific. Some of the fights, though, there's a lot of cutting and it's a little disoriented and I don't love it. Some of the, especially earlier action scenes, I, I get disoriented and don't know what's happening. Uh, so I could see that, which is like cut, 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 cut boom, boom, boom. Action, action, action. Like the way the, ask- the way this movie starts with the battle with the barbarians or the Germans or whatever they are, like that to me feels like a Tony Scott, Michael Bay battle sequence. It's great because those guys are great at action sequences and i love that it's like 20 minutes to i forgot every time i watch this movie i'm like i forgot this there's this whole war yeah, I forgot that the, the movie starts completely. with i i didn't yeah. remember how it began i was totally like oh yeah this is how it begins this is where those lines it's come great in. it's like a braveheart like oh it is battle you know well i was gonna ask though before we even get into gladiator have you guys seen the last duel have you guys yeah. ever watched that movie yeah I've seen parts of it. I know what you're talking about. Well, the action isn't like the point of the movie because we're getting, it's about, you know, sexual assault and different perspectives and a whole bunch of other stuff. But there's a, the, the titular last duel is so incredible. That's one of the best one-on-one fight sequences. I saw a very long time. I saw Napoleon in the theater, his movie last year with Joaquin Phoenix. And it's a, not a very good movie, but there's these like battle sequences where the French army takes a castle and it's like, holy shit, this is, why I we never see this kind of stuff in the, in movies anymore. It's so good. I know he's got this classical style, like this way ancient Hollywood fifties classical right. sensibilities. But he just, we're gonna have a thousand extras and people. You know what I mean? And oh, I, I just love that. Half, half yeah. of me, half of me enjoying Gladiator was just enjoying. We have a, a big production, big sets, yeah. whole bunch of extras, just 
took massive managing to make so many of these sequences happening. And, and, and that alone was enough to make me love the movie. The movie isn't just that. I mean, I know Russell Crowe won Best Actor, but I, I do think that Joaquin Phoenix does an incredible job in this movie. Um, he's got so many like little quiet moments that really work. Probably the favorite the one where it's like, oh my God, this is incredible is when he confront he doesn't know it at the time. Like, you know, after Russell Crowe is going into slavery and becomes a gladiator, he wants to see this famous gladiator in the Coliseum. And he pulled off the mask and he just like quivers in fear. He doesn't say anything. It's just all through his performance. You just see the sheer terror on his face. And he's like, this is incredible. Just absolutely stupendous. I, I, I love the part where he, when he kills his dad, he's like, oh, all these true. virtues. Yeah. And I realized I had none of them that are on your list. And he's like, but I have other virtues. And he's like crying and holding him and like, you know, murdering his dad. Like, I, I him, yeah. love that scene. Yeah. I, I oh, think he's, he's great in that. Yeah. He's, he's incredible. Every, I mean, he's on another plane. I mean, he really did, helps make the movie work I, for me. I did hear recently, I don't know if it was Russell Crowe or somebody said that he was like awful to work with when they made this movie. He said movie. that. He wanted to quit several was times. Was it Crowe? It was Crowe. Yeah. It was Russell Crowe. He was I like Walking Phoenix. It was one of those things where like leading up into it, he they weren't even sure he was going to show up. And then when he got there, he was just like such a maniac and terrible to work with. And Crow thought he was like totally unprofessional and like, you know, didn't didn't want anything to do with him, which is interesting because he's so good in it. And I mean, you could tell they kind of hate each other, which works for the movie, oh, right? Sure. Like they're, he killed his whole family. Yeah. Well, yeah, no, I, I love everything. I mean, this movie has so much in common with like Ben Hur. You could go back to the 50s and he's old. I think they call them like sword and sandal epics. I mean, it's just, yeah, just great. Um, and it's like, I, I'm so glad that we got Lawrence of Arabia. Yeah, sure. Yeah. And we got that stuff with more modern filmmaking techniques and a, and not having to shy away from the violence and the, the gore yeah. in a way that, that makes it hit harder. A lot of heads but, getting chopped off in this movie. So many heads. Uh, oh yeah. The one woman gets like spliced in half by like the axle of the chariot or whatever it is. Whatever yeah. is the spur that juts out. Oh man, this goes like this, and then just brutal and vicious. Um, no, that's what Marvel movies away. need. They need more of that shit. Uh, <laughs> more decapitations. That's you want to get twelve year olds. You need to get twelve year olds in the theater. It's not going to work. Too much violence. The, what Kevin said it was the second biggest movie of two thousand, right? Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I saw I, it when I, I was. It. I would I would have been seventeen or whatever. Yeah. Uh, uh, sure, but I, I'm just telling you how marketing executives at Marvel think. Uh, they they have the biggest grossing franchise ever, built largely on the backs of teenage boys, and they're going to keep turning them out, and they're not going to all of a sudden turn violent and gory, at least not categorically. I mean, they got that with like Deadpool and Wolverine. You get that. That's like a niche. That's project. gonna be what the second biggest movie of twenty four, probably. Yeah, I, I, that's fine. But they're still gonna have their mainstream, the the stupid Avengers with uh, Robert Downey Jr. as Doctor Doom. That's gonna be PG thirteen. It's not gonna be gory. Yeah, it's just not. But anyway, I, I, I yeah. but I love it. I mean, this is it's great. I was just it's like man, and and when Ridley Scott's gone, I mean, the dude's really old. He he is the best counter argument to Quentin Tarantino, by the way. Like. I don't know. How old is Ridley Scott? Is he 80 something? At least, yeah. He's still cranking out really good movies. Um, or at least movies that aren't awful, and I'm glad the, they exist. He was born in 1937. Yeah, he does have a clip. So he was 63 when he made Gladiator, 62, whatever. Crazy, right? How old is Tarantino? Is Tarantino 60? Yeah, he's probably in his 50s still. So... So shut up and just make as many movies as you want to, Quentin. This your ten movie cap is so stupid. Anyway, that's my point: is that this ten movie cap is dumb, and it's not based on solid evidence. It's just this weird romanticization. I don't know. Too insecure. I don't know what it is. Really, Scott is still cranking out movies. He's gonna try to make another Alien movie. Um, whatever. Dude's still got uh, you know well he's putting out a sequel to this movie like yeah right now it comes out in like two weeks which apparently 
they had giant sets. Denzel Washington, he was just talking. I saw an interview. He's talking about what we were talking about. It's like you bring in these huge sets and you got all these people, and it's like only Ridley Scott could do that. You know? Yeah, and it's gonna be. It's sad when it's gone. I, I haven't seen Napoleon. Yeah. Even if it's bad, I still think I ought to watch it. If there's big, massive sets, absolutely. And there, sequences, yeah. Like, because the last duel, even if you didn't care about any movie, just watching the fight at the end between Adam Driver and Matt Damon, if you just watch that sequence alone, it's it's so fantastic. It is so brutal and tense. It's like they, it feels like they nailed two guys in armor on horseback fighting. What what that would actually be like, and it's so brutal and intense. And that movie, yeah, I mean, it feels. Like the Middle Age, it's great. Anyway, uh, there's so much about that movie I like. And that, that movie came out, whatever, like four, three, four years ago. Um, but yeah, this movie, yeah, I mean, it just, it, I'm, yeah. I'm with you. It just made me happy. But this movie, yeah. I love the uh, revenge storyline. So um, sure. Maximus is told by the Caesar, uh, Marcus Aurelius, that yeah. he was going to be the his, his heir. And that he wants him to be the heir until he can give up power to the Senate eventually to the people. Yeah, I want to go back to being a Senate instead of a, you know, monarchy or whatever you call it. Yeah, a republic instead of a monarchy. Well, is that from like when Ju- Julius Caesar took over? Right? Didn't that isn't that what happened to him? He took over and never gave power back. Right. I think no? so. I'm not confident. I'm not confident of my history to say that's totally correct. But at some there, point, yes, they went from a line in the, to an autocracy. Isn't there a line in the Dark Knight where someone references Caesar and then Maggie Gyllenhaal's, yeah, yeah, that was Caesar and he never gave power back. Yeah, it, it's in reference to the like the contraption that they built. Never mind. This is a, that's a terrible. Uh, I'm quoting a movie, a different movie. I'm glad about you could history. bring in a Nolan movie. I'm glad you could <laughs> yeah. shoehorn some Nolan in. That guy doesn't get enough. I I said that. We'll, we'll delete that. <laughs> So yeah, good. so then uh, Joaquin Phoenix's character, Commodus, he yeah, exactly. kills his father once he finds out he's not going to be the heir, and he takes the throne, and he immediately has uh, Maximus ordered to be executed, and his family executed as well. And And Maximus he frees himself and tries to stop the slaughter of his family, but he comes a little bit too late. And then he's sold off as a slave and becomes a gladiator, the titular gladiator. Yeah. And yeah, it's really great what Joaquin Phoenix does in his role. He's He chews up the scenery, but not in a completely hammy way. He's really, really unlikable. Oh, he's he's the he's, he's the Joffrey away. before Joffrey, right? Like, yes, thank oh, you. Oh, yeah, he's vile. Oh, absolutely, yes. Did, did this movie come out before the Lord of the Rings books? Or, uh, sorry, not Lord yes. of the Rings. Um, yes, <laughs> not, obviously not Lord of the Rings. <laughs> the Game I think of Thrones one of them was, was written in the nineties. I don't know. I think maybe the first Game of Thrones might have been. I don't know. Actually, I could be wrong, but I thought because this to me like. I was watching this time around watching this movie. I thought a lot about Game of Thrones. I was like, holy shit. There's there's so much in this. That's like there's the incest. There's the like backstabbing and the palace intrigues, like stuff that made Game of Thrones so good. And I was like, man, are there is there some connection here? Because gladiators really like you don't think of that when you think of that movie. You think of the, you know, are you not entertained? Like all that shit. But it really has a lot of that you know, palace backstabbing and who's take, going to take power and who wants the throne and all that shit. There which were actually I think two really... Game of Thrones written before this one oh, came out. Okay. And the third one came out in the same year as Gladiator. Um, so did Rid- Ridley Scott read Game of Thrones? Is like, I got to do this in Maybe. Ancient There's been Rome. palace intrigue stuff for a long time. I mean, there was, I think history buffs got a lot of that if you really paid attention, but uh, maybe he could have read, he could have read uh, Game of Thrones. I'm like, ah, oh, this is what I'm going to do, baby. Um, well, because, I mean, like this story is it's fiction. Like, yeah. I mean, yeah, Marcus Aurelius was a real guy, right? Like, 
And they went back to being like a, not a democracy, but whatever. They went back to a republic or whatever a republic. for a little bit. Is, isn't like back. 100 AD, so we're talking post-Jesus, right? This is post-Jesus. But by a, 150 years, right? Yes. They've already um, crucified him at that point, right? <laughs> yes, that's, that's the Romans. That's ancient right? history. That's ancient history yeah. at this point. That was... What, I mean, is, before anybody's... Is Maximus sorry. Jesus, I guess? Is, is that question been answered? I don't Did think so. No, he's he not. He has Jesus, a son okay. and uh, he goes to Valhalla or wherever it is. What's there? I don't know what the Romans afterlife is. That's Where the he... Vikings, buddy. Oh, sorry. Um, my apologies. Um, yeah. Get what what are the Roman afterlife? I have no idea. Okay. Actually, just while we were sitting here, I ordered the book Meditations by Marcus Aurelius. So I'm multitasking here. I want to read oh, that. Oh, good. I've heard, I've heard it's good. Stoic philosophy. Apparently, he was the founder of. Wow, sure. what well, a learned yeah, man you are. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to trying to get up to your guys' level since I'm such a you know big goon here. <laughs> but you're right I, that it's I... like a, a, a simple premise, Kevin. I mean, it really is just a revenge story. I mean, it's relatively straightforward. And there's not a lot of nuance that doesn't need to be. I mean, we we know that he's betrayed, who he's betrayed by, why he's betrayed very early on, and basically we're just rooting for him to to get his revenge the whole time We're waiting for him to get back there. And, and it's awesome. I question the plan by Commodus, right? So he, he sees, so he sees, he offers Maximus, like, come join me. You know, my dad, my father's dead. Like I'm going to be Caesar. Join me and help me rule the army. And Maximus is a little bit like, I don't fucking believe this. And he doesn't bend the knee immediately. So then Commodus is like, fine, I'll just kill you and your whole family. Like the yep. leader of the, the general of the army, you're just going to do that. It seems like a terrible plan. I don't know. Why is it terrible? What was he going to do? Let him live and have him. Well, it doesn't... Been a civil war. If he lives, I mean, he does live in the end, but that's a fuck up by his men. If he kills Maximus, there's no power struggle. I just think there's a better way to handle that, right? Okay, you kill your dad, you become <laughs> okay. Caesar, and yeah, you, don't you go scruples. to Maximus and be like, because I, I suppose that the, the Commodus didn't know that his dad, well, he did know, he didn't know that his dad told him, told Maximus that he was going to take over when. They I don't return. know if you do that or not, but I think you. you yeah, should... because he tells him, he says, Max, Maximus will take over, and that's what triggers him to. Ki- to but he didn't know him. that he had told Maximus that. He just said, this is my plan, son. That's true. You're not going to inherit. He didn't know that Maximus knew that already. You're right. Yeah, he may have. He, he may have. I don't know. But but, the, but I think the key thing that happens is that they wake Maximus up and they say, your emperor needs you. And he gets up and he goes. And the emperor is Joaquin Phoenix. And he clocks immediately what happened. And Joaquin Phoenix. The sister's him. crying. She's right. sitting there crying. Yeah. Yeah. And he, and. You his know, former Joaquin, lover. Yeah, Commodus right. offers his hand. Joaquin Phoenix is like, you know, submit to me. He already asked for his help. Like, I'm going to need your help when the time comes. Submit to me. And he deliberately doesn't do that. And he knows... Very, very Ned knows. Stark. Very Ned Stark. Yes, he's absolutely Ned Stark. He's the kind of guy that I, I see why you like. He feels like a, a man for all seasons guy. It's yeah. just kind of like... His principles. Stannis, but not without the child sacrifice. Um, Stannis <laughs> Baratheon. Um, and all the weird witchcraft, but so, but he, so, I mean, Commodus knows Maximus is not going to be on my side. There's no point. He, he knows Maximus doesn't need to think about it. He knows Maximus has already decided what he's going to do. So if he lets Maximus live, Maximus is going to get his men and have a fight that Maximus will almost certainly win because he's better at combat. So he's got to get rid of Maximus as quickly as possible so that he can just subdue the throne. I, I get why he does. It makes total sense. And if his men had killed Maximus, how does he explain that to the army though? Because like there isn't there a reference the the guy from Braveheart later on, he's like our men are in a different country. Like we're not in Rome. We're waiting for you or waiting for somebody, right? Because so doesn't the whole army then just disband? Uh I don't know if they disband. I don't know, or they they can't yeah, go back to their homes. I don't know what the the arm I don't know what Maximus's army writ large does. But he tells. I'm the, just saying, if if you're Commodus, you risk losing your army. 
by killing Maximus. I think that that's a gamble. I, I don't. Well, maybe, but if you don't get rid of Maximus, you for sure lose your his army, and you have to fight him. You're looking at risking Just, losing he a, chunk a little of your softer army. touch. He needs some diplomacy instead of this, like bend the knee or die. I, I mean, I don't know. I, I think Commodus is, uh, he makes a couple of mistakes here and there, but I don't think that's one of them. I don't think he had any good options. So you're pro, Max, pro killing Maximus's family. I, and in terms of game theory and being a sound move, cold blooded. Yeah. <laughs> well, Ben's a real Commodus type over here. Real Commodus <laughs> defender. But if I'm Commodus, I also <laughs> don't want power. So I, I wouldn't have killed my dad. I, I wouldn't have expected that Ben's defending Commodus on this podcast. No, we're defending the, the soundness of a strategy, not the morality of a strategy here. Sure, right. You're saying he made a misstep. If he I think it was a misstep. a different course of action, things would have turned out better for him. And I'm saying... It's a tactical error, I think. What would have been a better choice? What diplomacy are you referring to? How would you... You could, you could imprison Maximus. Okay. You, you didn't have to be- kill his family and and his wife. Like that does that does nothing. That for would him. maybe made more sense. You keep them hostage or something. Yeah. That might work. If you keep them hostage, then you have a you, you can maybe, you know, say, hey, you go You could even blame Maximus for killing Marcus Aurelius. Like there's other things you could do there. Like I don't know, send him out, send him out to the woods with a bunch of weak soldiers, and you know, Maximus is gonna kill him. That's just a terrible plan. It's also the like Doctor Evil. We got him. We got him right here. Just kill him right here. You know, you don't send him away. To and then they lied about it and they said he was dead when he wasn't. Right. I mean, sure, that might have been an overstep, but I, the hostage thing works. But I, I think if you let him live without some sort of leverage, he's going to fight you, and you're going to lose. I just don't think there's any way you're going to convince him or his men of anything other than. This guy's a scumbag, and we're going to fight, and there's going to be a big civil war for power in Rome. But anyway, fair enough. Where you don't you think stand, it was a good Kevin? Call. Are you pro Commodus? Um, I think it was his only move it's to kill Maximus. So you're saying you morally approve of everything he does because you think <laughs> it was a tactically sound move. You're saying you're pro murdering. So you're and saying that's what that means. If they had, a, if there was an election in Rome, and you could have voted for <laughs> Commodus or Maximus. You're going. You're casting well, your vote for, wow. for Commodus. Wow. Well, Marcus Aurelius, he was too old. He should have stepped down. He should have stepped down earlier. He should have. He, Uh-oh. he held on for too long. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, very oh, Biden esque for yeah, very Biden. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is great. He tried to dissolve enjoy- the presidency. I'm enjoying this. <laughs> it was rigged. It was totally rigged for him. <laughs> do, so does Baron do the same? Does Baron take old <laughs> Don back and hug him and say, or is that more? That's more like a Don Junior thing. Oh. All of your virtues, I have none. <laughs> what do you think? What do you think Trump's virtues, his list of virtues are? Strength? Uh, charisma? McDonald's? <laughs> how is that? A, how is that? A, a, just a, He's really good at eating McDonald's. And like he, he likes can, cooking it, too. He likes cooking he can, fries. He can wolf down a Big Mac with the best of them. Joey right, Chestnut yeah. style. Okay. Um, sure. Lust it's definitely a skill, special skills, just says McDonald's. Yeah. Lust, did you say? Yeah. He, you gotta have lust. That's gotta be one of your virtues. It's a sin and a virtue, right? It can be both. Uh lying. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, there you that go. Might be an adept skill. Famelessness. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh but yeah, I mean Commodus is is he's the first great villain. He's awful. Even if he makes a tech player or not, he's really vile and he's you know trying to cement himself as an evil guy at one point he threatens to murder his nephew and force his sister to be his sex slave like it's that's uh yeah. pure Bear him and, yeah. and that that's, was him being merciful mm-hmm. uh, just absolutely and lunatic. you guys are on board you guys have already said in this podcast you're on board with it all. <laughs> we heard it yes. here uh, yeah, that's what that means. Think he made a sound tactical move. Means I am um, approve of everything he ever does. That's exactly what it means. 
Um, but it's nice. I mean, you get you get to know the characters, uh, keep it moving. You get some nice. You get the early scene where yes, they're in. I mean, yeah, it's Germany technically, but there's Germany doesn't exist as a country till like the 19th century. But it's it's just a bunch of tr- tribes of people. Well, yeah, because um, the Roman Empire was vast, right? It went all over Europe, essentially. Yeah, that's the first title card we get is like it stretched yeah. all the way to England, all the way to North Africa. And, um, you know, most that's of That's crazy on horses, like that they took over that much land and yeah, I mean, they had that like, much influence. They were like two weeks away from uh, Rome. It took them two and weeks now to Rome like, is a tiny little city in Italy. Yeah. And there aren't like, are time. there even Romans anymore? Is anybody a Roman? No, they're just Italian, right? Correct. Unless you consider the, the Catholic Church to be Roman, but that was a branding thing they did a long time ago, the Roman Catholic Church. So Jesus had his revenge on the Rome Romans. He took it over yeah. and now the Vatican's there. Okay. Uh, right? Uh, wow. Wow. Are you just viewing entirety of history as like uh, the Jesus revenge arc? I'm confused. Yeah, it is. Okay. <laughs> Interesting. Um, I don't well, because the Romans were heathens, right? They had no, they weren't, I mean, they believed in like. Well, they took the Greek gods, right? Like Greek they stole gods, them yeah. and made Roman versions of the Greek gods. And they had probably stuff that was even earlier than that. I mean, the Roman Empire was how many hundreds of years old at this point? Like 500 years old? Sure. I don't know. Um, I did like, so this is certainly not anything I knew about in the early 2000s. There's a, so when they're, they're at the Colosseum and they're doing like a recreation of the, what is it? The, the second fall of Carthage or whatever is like, Oh, I get that reference. Oh, Hannibal. I get that reference. Um, Oh yeah. That's when Hannibal was almost marched on Rome. But he didn't. Oh, and that where where Phoenix is like, forgive me if my history isn't correct, but don't the Romans win this battle or something like that? Yeah, yeah. It's like, oh, I get that. The reference. gladiators are supposed to be the yes, the losing side. They're of, all supposed to die. Yeah, and right. Russell Crowe being just so good at what he does, he he led them all to victory. Um, I, don't I know. love uh, that scene. Like the the guy pisses himself, and Russell Crowe steps back. Like, it's like the best scene in the movie. That that battle. Oh, that action sequence is the is the best. I, yeah, I would agree. I think so. It's yeah. the most impactful. The the one is more epic at the beginning, but it's also like clinical, and you're not super invested. You're like, oh, they're just going to win this battle, and like there aren't emotional stakes yet. Um, those come later. No, that's the most exciting. Because that's deliberately... the, that scene to me is like literally why I love movies. It's you just shut your brain off. And you're like transported in the Coliseum. Well, they're not in the Coliseum at that point, right? Or are they? I can't they remember. They are. Yeah, so they are, is, right? That's, that's the first one, first battle in the Coliseum, right? Yeah. 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 You're there. You're just there. You're experiencing a battle in the Coliseum. It's it's so awesome. It's like that to me is like the power of movies and why I love movies. Well, that that and the tiger fight, like where he's fighting the guy that comes out of retirement with the mask on. And they have like all the the tigers jumping out of pits. It's also just whoa, that's fucking crazy as well. Um, no, it's it's fantastic. No, I, yeah, I would say those are the that's where it really just just peaks out. But I mean, let's talk about the ending a little bit. Um, I mean, he's got this plan to escape. He's going to get to his men, and they're going to march on Rome and seize power. Um, and I would have what. Well, I would have loved to have seen that battle. By the way, I mean, obviously that's yeah probably would have been a hundred million dollars just for that sequence. But it was like, man, if we'd gotten that, I probably would have been happier. But they made it work with the smaller scale. I mean, it really is just him in the arena against Walking Phoenix, and it's very small scale. But I think it it really works pretty well. It's very it's satisfying. Kind of, yeah, it, it, it. I was surprised. I was let down for a half a second. I'm like, you know what? Actually, this works pretty well. I mean, I would have liked to have seen the like Siege of Rome or whatever that made up. This worked really well. And Walking Phoenix realizing that absolutely everybody hates him. Like in the end, nobody will give him a sword. Like, shield your swords. And he looks around, he's like, when it comes down to it, he's just, just utterly powerless. Um, on his own hubris, thinking he could win in the arena. I don't know, it's great. This is just 
it's built up. We get the get the confrontation between the antagonist and the protagonist, and it's it it does work really well. It's stripped down. We tie up all the loose ends. She doesn't have to be a sex slave after all. I guess the nephew is going to be the next, or there's not going to be another Caesar, so he's just going to be some uh, kid. I don't know if this is a spoiler, but the lead in Gladiator Two, I believe, is supposed to be that kid. That's fine. I don't know that I would call that a spoiler. That seems like the setup. I think that's, that's like been it. like, you know, discussed in in the promotion of the movie. I think the the Maximus is well. No, this is Commodus's nephew. Is is who the lead is in Gladiator Two. I can't remember what's the actor's name. Um, what is his name? He he plays like basically the gladiator in Gladiator Two. I don't know how that kid becomes like a. Well, he idolizes the gladiator, right? Yeah, it's like I am the great Maximus. Paul Mescal, Luc- yeah, Lucius, Lucius. Oh, okay. He plays that, Lucius. That's him. Okay. That's interesting. Didn't know that. I didn't know how they were going to tie the two together. And in the end, you yep. get this belief that yeah, Roman's gonna, Rome's going to go back to being a republic. And hey, at least for a little bit, the you know autocracy is over. You get the the epic hero's death. And he gets to go to the afterlife with his wife and son forever. Like, does the kid age in the afterlife, or is he just stuck being eight? Or can he go know. anywhere? Can he do anything? I, I just love with, with the forever? Diamond Hansu that the scene where he's like, "You'll see them again, but not yet." And Russell Crowe's like, "Yeah, not yet, not yet." I, I, that that gets me, man. I, that really gets me. I love that scene. Yes, yeah, I mean another one will like surprise me. Like, so Proximo is the old gladiator. Who's like kind of a hedonist? He's like, we're all ashes and dust. Our lives are just these these quick whirlwinds of of nothing. Um, I just want to make money. I, I don't care about fighting Rome. And in the end, he does the right thing, even though it's for a trap. Um, I wanted him to fight. Whereas another one where it was like managing, yeah. I wanted him to go down swinging. But then he does just hold the sword he was given um, when he was freed. And just lets himself be stabbed. And there's just like, okay, there's also sort of a, there's something poetic about that. Just, just not even, I'm just, they're going to assail me quickly. But because you know. he had won his freedom as a gladiator, I was, I'm in the same mind. I like, would have liked to see him take out a couple of the. Right. Go down swinging. You know? Yeah. He's not yeah. going to win, but go down fighting like he did his entire right. life. But in the end, he holds a sword and. You just, knew Marcus Aurelius. I didn't say I, I knew did, him. I, I did said say he touched I my him. shoulder. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, great yeah. movie guy. Great pick. Yeah. <laughs> Real solid choice. You do a great Russell Crowe. Well, we haven't talked. At, Austin, he's so good in this movie. too. We talked a lot about Joaquin Phoenix. Obviously, the accent. He's supposed to be a Spaniard. I don't know why they. There's no reason for him to be a Spaniard because he's not a real person. Yeah. You know? Well, I think they wanted him not to live in Rome. They wanted him to write, so he lives in Rome as in the Spanish colony territory, whatever that Rome controlled. So he's technically Roman. But that's also he rides from Germany to to well. Yeah, because he's at the camp in Germany when he's betrayed. And then they take him. I don't know where they take him to kill him. But then from there, he rides to Spain. Right? Yep. To Ooh, see he has his... to cross France. Uh, okay. Yeah, that's yeah, pretty and far. Germany is vague, too. I mean, it's like... it could. Th- there's a big, long chunk of land where he could but th- be. Isn't that, going not, west? Current... isn't that going west and then east, right? No? To, and then to go back to Rome? I mean, I assume he'd have to go west and south it, to some degree to get to Spain, wouldn't he? Yeah, from Germany, right? From, well, again, I, I, it could from be wherever, Belgium, somewhere. right? Like, yeah, like, right, sure. It could be somewhere in Northern Europe. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, he, he barely makes it. He's passed out on his horse. Uh, but yeah, I mean, he rode for for weeks. I would assume. 
weeks it would take weeks right yeah. to get yeah, weeks for across across europe on a horse how fucking long would that take forever and i assume we had to stop and eat occasionally i know we don't see that but it's like i mean at some point yeah you would you're wounded and i mean if it's food. for it's movie bullshit like we don't need to see him like you know right. stopping and he makes it he doesn't die yeah. whatever right. like probably you would die in real life but whatever he he's a mythical character basically so he doesn't that's fine <laughs> do like well russell crowe's very good i don't think he has as an actor a complete range i think there is he's got a commanding presence he's charismatic um i believe him as this like stoic guy who just wants to farm and bone his wife you know and eat figs but fights just because he happens to be really good at it and it's it you know it's necessary as a civic duty I don't know. I, I didn't buy the scene where he, he sees his wife and son like he gets back to his estate. The face he was making was like, I, I, I couldn't, I, I know he was going for sad. It didn't quite work. I, I didn't love that, but we don't see that too much. And the plot just carries the, the momentum and the emotion forward. There's a Reddit thread about how long it would take him, how long it would take a wounded Maximus to go from Germany to Spain. There's a whole on a horse. <laughs> that's okay. fine yeah the the threat is like he, there's no way he could do that in one day yes but he couldn't I, do it in one day I, I don't think that they imply that he did it in one day it's whatever. No. No, some and I, time I, passed and I don't think it would be I think he would even be close to saving them in reality like a bunch of like whatever the Romans equivalent of a messaging system so yeah, there's still there's faster. still smoke, right? Like when he gets there, there's still smoke. Yeah, it's basically a, Uncle yeah. Owen and Aunt Baru. Like, oh shit, we home. just missed him. <laughs> yeah, uh, like, like no, they'd be long dead. I think probably wouldn't it wouldn't be close, but that's okay. Again, you forgive it. It's it's doing movie magic stuff, and that's fine. And then he you know he just passes that. I guess the slave guy finds him laying there. I don't really remember yeah. how he got from like there we to the know, slave yeah. caravan. He gets maggots in his arm, which are going to clean the wound. And then he ends up in North Africa somewhere. Um, well, yeah, and then he does some, some grubby fights. So those earlier fights are my least favorite because those are the ones that are cut really fast, especially that first time he goes in the arena, not in Rome, but wherever that is that they have the or fights. The, the, well, the first time he refuses to fight, I mean, when they're like training, he's like, I'm not going to fight. And then, yeah, not the training yeah. sequence. When they go to the actual yeah. Coliseum, where like, yeah. if he doesn't fight, he'll be killed. And so he does actually fight. Um, How many of you were in the army? And then they kind of, he kind of gets them to work together. But it cuts really fast. And I like, I lost the thread. We're hopping around to a bunch of random dudes that we don't know super well yet. And I couldn't hardly tell what was happening. And everybody's chained together. That was my least favorite, only because it was just very tough to tell what was going on. Um, once they get to the Coliseum, and then the fighting becomes pretty immaculate um, and fantastic. I feel good. This is this is great. Well, I I liked how the early fights were edited because that's how frantic and disjointed you would feel if you were just thrown out somewhere. I thought that captured that feeling pretty well. Yeah, me too. I suppose I, I don't want to be disoriented. I don't need to get the perspective of him. I want to just enjoy the fight because I didn't think Russell Crowe was going to die. Uh, but I get it. It was chaotic and some dudes just get stabbed. All of a sudden there's a sword in you or whatever other implement is impaling. It's you. a little jarring because there's that one and then it skips to where everybody's chanting his name and he's just like, come, he goes out there by himself and kills like six guys. And that's the, that's where you get the famous, you know, are you not entertained? entertained? Yeah, he throws the sword into the audience because yeah. he despises all time great masses. movie line. I think that's a top five all time great movie line. Hey, well, I you think. were entertained, weren't you? Right? Like you threw it and you're like, I, I am entertained, was. Russell. Yeah. I'm, I'm entertained. <laughs> is this is not why you're us? here? Or is it mocking us for enjoying Gladiator and its violence? Is it critical of us? Could be. Could be. Okay. He's speaking that's, to you. I'm sure. It's a simple, straightforward premise that's super well executed. So I just kept thinking of, of Ben Hur. I love the lighting. It's lit in a way that not a lot of movies are lit. Well, I already talked about it, but like the all the scenes, like with the shadows and light, 
inside the um, throne palace, wherever it is, where Proximo, uh, not Proximo, Commodus is all the time. It's like, man, I love the lighting in this. I love the way the light creeps through, peers through behind some shades, and then just walking through just little like droplets of light. It's great. Man. The other thing that hit me watching this movie is like, is that isn't that kind of just what football is to us now? Oh, of course. I mean, isn't it like the same thing? Yes, obviously we're not watching them literally kill each other, but we kind of are. Well, they're shortening their lifespans for our entertainment. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. We're just slamming into each other and yeah, it, it hits our paleolithic like right. brains, it's our the tribal same brains. Lizard we're, brain, yeah. Yes, in- engaging in that same function. Cheering with a giant hit where a guy gets leveled on the ground. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, it's I hate those Wisconsinites. The Packers right. suck. I hate them. I hate the state of Wisconsin. Oh, they're all scum. Yes. And and yes, indulging all those. Boo Aaron Rodgers. Ugh, thumbs down. Like, you know. <laughs> You're not in my tribe. Screw you. I hate you. Yeah. Yes. Oh yeah. I mean oh. the USC plays in the Coliseum, right? That's what that building is called. And they're the Trojans. I know mm-hmm. it's not the Romans, but should they uh, change their name to the USC Romans? They should. Or Gold, Minnesota Golden Romans. No, it doesn't have a ring to it. it there isn't a, a Romans sport, a sports or college team. What's up with that? Yeah, I don't, know. I don't think they go with Trojans. You get Spartans. Yeah, I don't know. Rome shaming. What's up with that? Well, they're shaming because they don't have a mascot. Yeah. What saying? Well, yeah, they yeah. You want they're some affirmative excluded. action Roman mascots? You want to be right. the we have the fighting Irish, like what the fuck the, is the that? The Vikings, you know, geez. Yeah. Making fun of the Norse. Yeah. I don't have an answer for you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry there isn't a Roman mascot in sports. Maybe at high school level there is. I don't know. Yes, it's the, it's absolutely the same pulse. A impulse. Oh yeah, uh, it's the same thing. You just have these like friggin' Neolithic brains. That's the whole thing when they're like they like people like being associated with victory and this mass cultural identity because they're talking about why they even had to go to Germania and fight some tribe. They had to all, you know, take weeks and weeks and weeks to go fight some battle, way far away from actual Italy and Rome. Well, people like the battles because it gives them a sense of identity, a shared cultural experience of victory. People are like, hey, I'm part of Romans and we kick the ass of some. That's cr- that's so else. crazy to think like you're just some farmer in wherever and you're like, hey, the news travels. Hey, we won this huge battle in Germania. Like, oh, yeah, we kick those we kick ass. barbarians We're the best, ass. Aren't we? Like, yeah. aren't we the best? Right. Yeah. It's such a weird, weird thing, but it's, so, you know, that's like a human instinct. Yeah. It is. Yeah, did you see the Vikings? They won on Sunday. Yeah, we kicked their ass. It's the same idea, right? Yeah, fuck Jacksonville. What a sh- right. shithole that place is. Not nice like our place, right? Our place has no problems. Theirs has lots of them. You think you would have <laughs> been a good gladiator? Yeah, I would have been great, Eric. I would have <laughs> won so many battles. Well, you, you got all the tactical <laughs> stuff down. I, I would be like 550,001. In fact, I'd be so good they just Use me as a one-man army. They'd be like, hey, you're going to go to Germania and you're going to single-handedly you this they, battle for us. You think they have advanced they're stats for the gladiators? Yeah, like wins they against They were placing bets. Did you see? They had they a big were, betting yeah. board. Yeah. They are taking money. Is there they odds? Were. You think Maximus, he must have I, I assume but... there are odds. They had, I'm sure, enough of an understanding of math to be like, what are the odds the Romans lose? I'll give you 100 to 1 or whatever. You know, like, sure. They're trying to entice bets. Against the home team. Uh, no, I would have been a shitty gladiator. I, you know, I grew up soft in uh, the <laughs> 1980s. These people like grew up like having to walk and fight and claw and just be badasses all the time. I would, they, I can't even fathom like growing up learning how to fight when you're eight or whatever. Like you're eight now. Time yeah. to here's a sword. Learn to fucking kill, or else you're no, a pussy. No like, concussion protocol. I don't think. With it's that. like you, you you had to get good at killing real early, like all over the place. Uh, so I can't even fathom. I I would die instantly. I would be the guy pissing himself 
uh, I'd get stabbed and that'd be the be end. How about you, Eric? Would you, would you dominate? You're a big, strong, manly man. Would you just dominate? <laughs> uh, <laughs> You're not no. soft. You just get, you just get results. No, I, uh, I would have, I would have a hard time sticking a sword through another person. I think that would be a if, difficult thing for me to do. So you just never get done that. I've never done that passes. before. So. I think even lifting those weapons were probably so heavy. Like I bet some of those have weapons were like 20, 30, 40, 50 pounds. It's so like even getting a good swing in is something I don't think I could do. I think it'd be like, well, the choice of weapons. Interesting. The one big guy had that like a uh, sort of whip thing or uh, I don't even know what you call it, but he was kicking ass with that. He had the one, one sort of spear. And then he was like whacking dudes with the, I'd want like a long range bow and arrow. Maybe no, there weren't any like bow and arrow guys. There were some, they got killed. There were people in bow and arrows when they did the recreation on the chariot things. But even that, like that, you have to be really strong to be able to pull a bow back and get it taught. Yeah. Like that's, that self is like, it's not like modern bows where they do a lot of that for you. It's literally, you had to be really fucking strong to do that and practice accuracy. Even if people are like, you imagine how inaccurate you'd be like, you just, here's your bow and arrow. We're going to give you 10 arrows, Eric. This person's going to be 20 feet away. If you kill them, you win. But if you don't hit them in 20 arrows, they're going to stab you in the face. Definitely I, would want I, a shield. I don't want a big shield. You got to have pretty wicked shield. How heavy do you think fucking shields were? Like, probably really heavy, yeah. Like, you think they, like when people, since they're at like a young age, just learn to fight. Um, you think, talk- what if the three of us are chained together in the... I think we're all gonna die. What's Uh, our move? What's our move? Bicker and then get stabbed, Uh probably. (laughs) You do this, no, you do this. Ah, They come up to kill us and we're just like arguing with each other. (laughs) Yep. Some meat. We could just do a podcast for the the gladiators. Sure. You think you find that interesting? We have magic powers. We can record conversations. Ooh. Well, it's like they had, there's one scene where they had the play where they were reenacting the battle. It's the same idea. It is, except for it's a play, not like recorded audio. Which well, I don't just, think just yapping, you know, Joe, okay. Rogan, Joe Rogan style. Yeah, you think that would have resonated? Yeah. I can't even fathom. I, like there's like some people that grew up on horseback, like at the age of like two or three, they like learned to ride horses and they had like, they can, I don't know like Attila the Hun kind of stuff where they could just ride on horses and hit targets really far away, sideways, just all this like bonkers stuff. So no, I, I would not last long. I don't think any of us would. I would bet heavily against any of us surviving. Sorry. If they put you in the Coliseum, Eric, I, I you know, I put a hundred, whatever. What, what's the Roman currency? Denarius. Oh. I don't know. I'd put hundred denarius against you. Sorry. Denarius. I would be just, entertained. I can tell you that much, Eric. Do you so gla- gladiator over thrones? I think gladiator is better than Game of Thrones. I mean, uh, sh- uh, on the whole, sure. I mean, as gladiator a property. is like, yeah, as well, a gladiator property. is like a two hour movie versus a if you turn gladiator into a five season show, I, I you'd have a hard time stretching that. The best of thrones is not as good as the best of this movie. Well, the very best of Thrones resonates with me more than than this. Battle of the Bastards, maybe. Yeah, it might be on par. Yeah, like and just right. like the Red Wedding and the crazy betrayals and just the dramatic moments. Yeah, are fantastic, but the lows are god awful. So how do you average it out? If Gladiator had six seasons, there'd be some, there'd be some some shitty ones in there. We should do. Why didn't they do like a Gladiator? You could do a, a series. I don't need a series of this. This is this is what you do. This is a tight, pretty tight, little over two so hours. So you don't need a sequel either then? Probably not, but I'd rather have a sequel than a series. Like, okay, you want to continue the story? Crank it out another two, two and a half hours? Sounds good. I, I don't need a bunch of dramatic filler. I don't need a romantic subplot where like we get more drawn out love scenes between him and his old girlfriend and... I think that's the, the weakest are. of this movie is the Commodus stuff. Like, I think there's too much of it. Too much of Commodus. The sister, 
Yeah, there's just too much of that. There's what maybe one too too many scenes of. Well, the whole thing is it's a rivalry between Commodus and Maximus. Yeah. Really, is what it comes down to. Just primordial. Your dad love my dad loved you more than me. Meh, is the fundamentals of the emotions of this movie. Um, and his I mean, sister. I, I know they were fighting over the sister. He was upset. Commodus was upset that like his sister was attracted to Maximus. I'm jealous. Okay. You are a weird dude, Commodus. Very weird dude. This is, but this, mm. this works because of its simplicity. We don't need a, a, a drawn out, complicated narrative. What works because it's, it's to the point and the action sequences are really good and you get invested in the characters. You, know, you get invested in, and see him get his revenge, he gets it. Hey, I had a good time. I don't know, do you need a bunch more betrayals? Do you need a big no. Senate fight, Eric? Do you need to learn who eight senators are and some power struggle within? No. But that's what Thrones is. Thrones know. would spend a whole season on that shit. Yeah. Right? It's a it's kind of different things. I don't think I don't know that Thrones has a single action sequence that I love quite as well. I don't know. But I think of like the fight between the guy from Dorne, Pedro Pascal's character. Who's also mountain. But plays a big part in Gladiator too. That that Those fight things, was excellent. I mean, there's some excellent fight one-off scene. fights. Yeah, it, it is. But it gets undercut. What were you gonna say, Kevin? Was... Oh, I didn't realize Pedro Pascal was in Gladiator too. Yeah, he's like the second lead, I think. Wow. I think I think Denzel's maybe like a supporting. Is the sense I get very yeah. very Denzel's little. Denzel's getting all the buzz though. Yeah. I think he's got the Oscar buzz going. Well, and there's like a lot of criticism because it's not historically accurate. I don't, I don't, that doesn't mean it. it's a fiction. Like, I, I don't yeah. need it to be historically oh, Eric, accurate. Wonder. You can, you can have fake history, but you can't have fake future. That's, you're so funny. <laughs> if we set Gladiator in the year 2018, you'd hate it because it'd be an inaccurate prediction of the future, but set it in a fake past and you're fine with it. If it's supposed to be in the future in the world we live in right now, then yes, this is just a fiction. They, it, it, it's, it doesn't you can do whatever you want. But I not mean, if you create a sci-fi movie that's set in the future. To a certain extent, I guess. I don't know. You fascinate me. I mean, I yeah, I don't care that it's made up. This is just a fun story. I don't, I don't need to be historically accurate any more than I need Gladiator Two to be historically accurate. The it's whatever. Galaxy far away, uh, time long ago. Okay. Good enough explanation for me. Do whatever you want then. I don't care. But when you say it in the year 2000, year 180 AD, 180 AD, which this didn't happen, but you said a year. Yeah, but like the criticism is like, well, they didn't have crossbows in 180, like whatever. Like, but you make the same criticisms. We didn't have this technology or this problem in the year 2018. So why'd you set it in 2018? This isn't how it happened. No, but we do well, have China it. That's... didn't happen. Yeah, I know, whatever. I know. I, you fascinate me. It's fine. I whatever. I agree with you about Gladiator. Who cares? It's it's a, it's a historical epic that's made up. They made it up. It's believable enough. They did enough work to make it feel like Rome, one eighty AD. That's fine. I can enjoy it. I mean, if all of a sudden a guy had a cell phone, I'd be like, "Well, that's stupid." Or there's a bottle of water laying around. I'd be like, yeah, that's kind of dumb. But did you ever see a Knight's Tale with Heath Ledger? Uh-huh. Did that bother you with the like the modern music playing? No, not too bad. It's just that's just not a very good movie, but <laughs> no, it's not it's not gladiator. The action sequence. Isn't it like we will rock you? Is don't they play that in one yes, scene or yes, something like that? They play yeah. like modern rock yeah. songs. And he's really good at jousting and fighting, but it's it's that's a choice. It's silly. Yeah. Okay. I was just curious. All right. Well, Erica, I don't think there's any reason to add. This is a five out of five for you, right? Dad, what's the do Absolutely even with a bullet. This is, a, this is like an all-time great movie for me. Better than Twister? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Oh, okay. Twister, I just love. This movie, I love, and I think it's great. Okay. Wait, so you don't think Twister is great? <laughs> Twister is great for what it is. Don't don't I won't stand for the Twister slander. Man. I'm just repeating what you're you trying. Said. You're trying. You said to, you, you know. love Twister, but Gladiator 
you love and it's great. If Why Twister had been a best picture winner, I'd have been like, uh, maybe, maybe not. This wins best picture. I'm like, yeah, it should because it's great. Okay. You'd have been upset if Mission Impossible 2 won best picture over this? <laughs> I would, yes. Okay. It was definitely nominated, though, right? It was in the running. Oh, yeah. Very close. What were the other? Uh, that'd be an interesting. Uh, it's too early for Lord of the Rings. We didn't get the first one till the year later, so it's not Fellowship yet. Uh, so it's the is it the ninety nine? No. For the year two thousand, the two thousand and one awards for the year two thousand. Uh, oh, right. So this is, yeah, so it would have been in 2001. Right? Yeah. Yes. All right. Yeah, Crow wins. Was Phoenix, Walking Phoenix nominated? Actor in a supporting role. He was. He did actually. I was like, that nominated. makes sense. He should have been. Yeah. He was pretty excellent. But I think didn't. Who won that? Did Benicio? No. I, don't know. I can't see here who won. Was Traffic in one of the movies? Traffic was... was the same year. Yeah. Okay. All right. Best picture was Gladiator, Chocolat, Crouching Tiger, Aaron Brockovich, and Traffic. Okay. Good hmm. year for movies. Yeah. Never seen Chuckle Lot. Is that anybody you would hate seen it. that? You would hate would it. I? Okay. This you would be annoyed. You would be like, why is this even being compared to my beloved Letty? <laughs> <laughs> Insulted by its pathetic. existence. Yes, yeah, so this is pathetic. This is you know, I movie. didn't didn't love traffic. Maybe I need to watch that again. I didn't love I mean, traffic either, but I I respect it. <laughs> I get exactly what you're saying. It's like I, it's trying to do some interesting stuff. I don't know if it sticks the landing. It's pretty cynical about the war on drugs and the futility of it. And preachy. Oh, brother, we're out though. Not even nominated. That's a that's a crime. Sorry, it's a, mm, like, a musical. I don't know, man. <laughs> Instead exactly. of chocolate, should have been our brother. Well, now I want to pick chocolate just so I can see you be <laughs> incredulous that that this was considered one of the five best movies of the year two thousand. I can't even hardly remember the plot. I just know I just don't think there's a thing that happens in it that you would like. Um, but Kevin, where are you at with uh, Gladiator? Well, I remember watching it in the theater and being blown away by it, and I've watched it a few times since. And it's but it's been at least a decade since I've watched it. And I really enjoyed my rewatch. It held up, held up, holds up. Uh, it's a beautiful movie to watch. The acting I thought was was good. It's a five star movie for me. Uh, I am almost there. I'm at four and a half and I don't have a great reason why I would knock it off. It just doesn't didn't quite go to the crazy awesome five-star immaculate land it's excellent i don't know how many serious I, I don't love the early fight scenes a couple of times i go with crow and i think eh, okay it's too entertaining to for it to be a five-star movie <laughs> yeah that's it <laughs> it's really wasn't fun. boring it wasn't boring enough it didn't make me think at all I and mean, that's exactly why you like it like this is what i want i want a movie that doesn't I don't want any neurons firing while I watch this bad boy. I want everything to just go dormant. Um, but that's okay. I don't actually have to have that uh, from a five-star movie necessarily, but just, just uh, didn't quite elevate me to, to the five-star level. But it's it's excellent. Worth a rewatch. You guys, wait, so how long was your version? Because you guys did the director's cut with extra 15 minutes. We didn't talk about this. I have the theatrical three okay. theatrical version. So I, I, have, I don't know. I have I, the extended I don't know what the 15 minutes were. I, okay. I mean, if I watched them back to back, I'd probably know, but it's been too long. Yeah, it was on Paramount Plus. So I ended up not getting it on DVD, and it was just the theatrical cut that was on Paramount Plus. 
Okay. Well, let's let's get you boys prepped for next week. Uh, this movie was released in Year of Our Lord, nineteen eighty seven. Nineteen eighty seven. Nineteen eighty seven. So just reading that, there. So sorry, uh, we can get You're back fine. here. Um, nope. There's delete deleted scenes. Yeah. Some people say it's the improved version. So was there a scene where um, involving Walking Phoenix and archers? Was there like an archer scene? And there it's might a little have been. Gorier, I don't... That's all. I don't know. That's all I can okay. gather from my crude internet searching. Sorry, 1997, you said? No. 1987. No, way off. No, no, a decade. 1987. It's fine. 1987. Um, I'm going to read this section from the Wikipedia page. Um, in August 2020, a remake of this movie was reported to be in development with Will Smith and Kevin Hart as the leads. In February 2023, Hart confirmed that the writing was already underway. In December 2022, it was announced that another remake uh, film was in the work with Drew Barrymore and Adam Sandler in the leading roles. Is that helpful at all? Ke- Are you familiar from with- Kevin Hart and Will Smith to Drew Barrymore and Adam Sandler? Correct. Oh, I bet this is like, is it like a, it's a comedy, right? It is a comedy. Yeah. Is it like Trading Places or something like that? Not trading places. No, you're on the right track, but it's not trading places. I, I like trading places quite. It's a an bit Eddie Mur- Eddie Murphy movie. Uh, it is not an Eddie Murphy movie. No. Nope. Um, I'll give you one of the actors in the movie is Kevin Bacon. Tremors. No, it's not Tremors. <laughs> I love the idea of a. Adam Sandler and Drew Barrymore remake of Tremors, think, though. Yeah. That sounds Will Smith, insane. Kevin Hart, and Tremors would be great. Well, that one would make sense. I can't imagine. I don't even can't even conceptualize an Adam Sandler and uh, Drew Barrymore version of Ooh, Tremors. There's a, there's a worm. <laughs> <laughs> I have such as a worm. Can't always better. Look out for the worms. They send sound. Give me some candy. Um. Okay. Um, it's not baby. Footloose, is it? It's not Footloose. And I was really mean with the Kevin Bacon hit because he's got he's got a very small role in this movie. He's actually not in a lead. Uh, it was, oh, it was... uh... got okay. it. Okay. Is he's it nerd... because it's it's uh, Thanksgiving coming up? Uh, yeah, yep. It is a Thanksgiving holiday movie. Yes, have you got it figured out, Kevin? Yeah, I do. Um, okay, Plane Strains. Yep, and automobiles. Yep. That's right. So Thanksgiving is coming up. This is, I, I don't watch it every year, but this is uh, one of the movies that I love. And I, I'm looking forward to Eric, you making me feel like a jackass for liking it and, and stupid and pathetic. So looking forward to you. Do you like this movie? Have you seen Planes, Trains, and Automobiles? I've seen it. Yeah. I um, love this movie. Well, me too. Uh, and I can't I, believe. I have a. Sorry. Oh, You're I fine. can't imagine the remake. I'm so glad it's not made. Correct. Just, I saw that. I was like, no, no, no. Just to both hearing of these. that no. makes me mad. Yeah. Yeah. No, no to both of these. I, if I were Lord of the universe, these people would be sent to hell for even considering it. They would just be tortured. <laughs> uh, so, Eric, you saw it and you have vague recollections oh, I, of it. No, I, I was just going to say, I kind of have a Steve Martin allergy. Uh, <laughs> see, of course. I knew something. I remember I something. Uh, one of the first times I w- I spent time with my uh, my father in law, he was not my father in law then, but we were playing the game apples to apples, and one of the cards came up was like Steve Martin, and someone said hilarious, and I was like, who would think Steve Martin is hilarious? And my father in law looked at me very seriously, and he was like, I think he's hilarious. Yeah, that's <laughs> awesome. Like, oh, okay, that's awesome. All right, I love okay. this guy. Got- Steve Martin was one of the biggest stand up comics of like in the world. Who would think this guy is funny? That's that's fantastic. Yeah. So, so all right. Well, uh, so I'm looking forward to you being mildly annoyed by this movie, then Eric. But uh, I love it. This movie makes me very happy. I actually just was going to started watching it, and then I just couldn't stop. 
Um, it's great. Yeah. yeah, one of the few and, Thanksgiving movies I'm aware of. I know mean, there's like Thanks Kill, Killing, or whatever the Eli Roth movie. A few like schlocky horror movies. I don't know of that many. Almost all Thanksgiving is so close to Christmas that when people do holiday movies, they go to Christmas. But Thanksgiving's coming up. I want to rewatch Planes, Trains, and Automobiles. Love John Candy. That's his best performance in his career. Um, anyway, we'll talk. Yeah, Planes, Trains, John and Candy. Let's see. In 1987, he was. He was only like 37 years old. Sure. So we're already older yeah. than John Candy was. He he to me he was always like an old guy. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Oh, he looks very he yeah. looks cool. He looks old in, in this and everything. He looks old in home alone. Looks old in vacation. Just anything. He looked old in space balls. Like <laughs> this dude looked like he was like 40 years old. Kind of like Steve Martin, who's always just looked looked fucking old. He's never seemingly looked like a young person. Um, it's on Tubi, so you don't have to pay if you can tolerate the commercials. Tubi, Tubi. Uh, so anyway, planes, trains, and automobiles. Awesome. Also, uh, it's also on Roger Ebert's great movie list, by the way. Really? Yeah, that's actually the first time I watched it. It's like, oh, this movie is stupendous. So. But but if you don't like Steve Martin, we're fucked. You're gonna hate it. It's, if he, he's on your shit list, your very long naughty list, Eric. It's just you're done. This movie's drawing dead. But I'll give him a shot. Thanks. Appreciate it. All right. Plane, strange, and out. We do it live. That goes in eternity. Yeah.